When the Minnesota Streetcar Museum compiled and digitized the vintage Twin City streetcar films taken by trolley fans in the 1950s, there was enough coverage to create separate programs on the Como Harriet, Intercampus, and University Avenue lines. This video covers the rest of the system, as well as car houses and support facilities. We've put it together into one catch-all program. With this release, all the vintage streetcar video is available for the public to view. This map shows the transit system in 1948. The streetcar lines are in red and buses are in green. We start with the Bryant Avenue line in South Minneapolis crossing Minnehaha Creek on its own bridge. In order to reduce the width of the bridge, the two tracks overlapped. This is what they call gauntlet track. And they returned to separate double tracks after leaving the bridge. Next, we'll follow the Minnehaha line from downtown Minneapolis out to Fort Snelling. This is a Minnesota Rail fan's excursion in 1953, stopping on 27th Avenue South at the crossing of the Milwaukee Road at 27th Street. This is that same location showing a train crossing next to Twin Cities Ornamental Iron. Leaving 27th Avenue, the streetcars followed Minnehaha Avenue from Lake Street all the way to Minnehaha Park. Here's that same excursion entering the stub track that terminated in Minnehaha Park opposite the Soldier's Home Bridge. The stub was a remnant of the original line to Fort Snelling, which was later bypassed. Here you see a streetcar passing the Minnehaha Depot. Note the original center overhead wire poles, replaced everywhere else by poles on the side of the road. Leaving Minneapolis, the line entered the reservation of Fort Snelling. At Fort Snelling, it met the streetcar line from downtown St. Paul, as well as a streetcar shuttle to the upper post. This shot shows it ramping up to cross the Milwaukee Road's freight spur that served the fort. This next sequence follows a Minnesota Rail Fans Association fan trip over the Broadway Crosstown line in north and northeast Minneapolis with a side trip to Northside Station. This was also the last run of lightweight car number four. It was one of four built for operation in local lines in Stillwater, Minnesota until 1932. After that, it was converted to double end operation and became the backup car on the Fort Snelling shuttle between Fort Snelling and the upper post. Here it is crossing the Broadway Bridge with the Grain Belt Brewery in the background.
At the time, the bridge emptied into 13th Avenue Northeast and passing through the Greenbelt Brewery Complex. and a side trip into the yard at Northside Station. A streetcar on East Hennepin Avenue enters the old St. Anthony neighborhood and takes a left turn onto 2nd Street Northeast. Still in Old St. Anthony, a southbound Monroe car turns from Central onto East Hennepin. After traveling up Monroe Street, the cars turn left onto Broadway, sharing the tracks with the Broadway Crosstown line for a short distance. Here both the Monroe and Broadway cars pass Logan Park. Both lines turned off Broadway onto Washington Street Northeast, and then the Broadway line turned left on 13th Avenue to head to North Minneapolis. At 18th Avenue Northeast, the track crossed the Northern Pacific Railroad. The grade crossing is being reconstructed, so Twin City Lines has installed temporary crossover track and temporary track to go through the construction area. Next, we'll visit the Central Avenue line, seen here around Lowry Northeast. This shot looks north from St. Anthony Boulevard, alongside Columbia Park towards Columbia Heights. The streetcar has reached the end of the line at 37th and Central, city limits between Minneapolis and Columbia Heights. This next series of views shows the Nicollet Avenue line starting in downtown Minneapolis and going all the way out to the Richfield city limits of 62nd Street. Here a streetcar turns from Hennepin onto 1st Street. The same view turning from Hennepin onto 1st Street. And after boarding this gentleman, it is turning on to Marquette to head through downtown Minneapolis. It passes Pioneer Square Park with the main post office in the background. This is between 4th and 5th Street on Marquette in downtown. At the south edge of downtown, the line used Grant Street for one block to shift over to Nicollet Avenue. This shows a southbound car headed down the hill from 52nd Street to Minnehaha Creek.
This is another Minnesota Rail Fans Association excursion. It's turning around the loop at 62nd and Nicollet. The motorman on the excursion was Ed Nelson, a huge streetcar fan and one of the original historians of Twin City Rapid Transit, and here we see him running the car up Nicollet Avenue. When the streetcars quit here in 1954, Ed was brokenhearted. He moved to Toronto, Canada, and worked for the rest of his career for the Toronto Transit Commission, which never got rid of its streetcars. This excursion covered a number of lines. In this case, we're headed out Glenwood Avenue. You can see downtown in the distance. The Glenwood Avenue line ended at Glenwood Park, which is now called Theodore Wirth Park. Here's the streetcar approaching the end of the line and then backing into the Y track. The Glenwood Avenue line was paired with 4th Avenue South in downtown Minneapolis, and here the car is on 4th Avenue, turning next to the Minneapolis Auditorium to head south. We're headed out 4th Avenue, passing Central High School at 34th Street. and the Hosmer Library at 36th Street, which still stands. This trip was taken one day after the line was converted to bus, which is why you see the bus in this frame. This is the Y at 38th Street for short line cars. And this is a typical car stop sign. They were mounted high on the overhead wire support poles. The streetcar is turning into the Y at 48th Street, the end of the 4th Avenue line. And pulling out of the Y to return north. Jumping back to North Minneapolis, we have a couple of shots on the Plymouth Avenue line. The line ended at Plymouth and Sheridan, and that's where this streetcar is approaching the camera. It passes Queen Avenue and Plitman's Delicatessen. And looking the other way makes a stop at Penn Avenue. It's headed for downtown Minneapolis via Plymouth and Washington Avenue North. Moving a mile to the north, we're at the corner of Broadway and Penn. This is a Penn Avenue car approaching Broadway, and it's going to turn onto Broadway and head to South Minneapolis.
On Lake Street, a Selby Lake car crosses Nicollet Avenue. A Selby Avenue car descends the ramp from the Milwaukee Road Short Line Bridge just west of Hamlin Avenue and returns up the ramp. The most unusual feature of the Selby Lake Line was the tunnel that allowed it to go from Summit Hill to downtown St. Paul, past the St. Paul Cathedral. Built as a San Francisco type cable car, the original cars could climb any slope because they were pulled by a cable. The electric streetcars that replaced them had to rely on adhesion and the grade was too steep. And that's the reason for building the tunnel that cut the steepness of the grade in half. Even so, the hill was an operational challenge and streetcars were required to go down at seven and a half miles per hour to avoid a runaway. And in fact, a couple of runaways happened in the history of the line. This is a Minnesota Rail Fans Association fan trip. It's stopping at the tunnel and then we're going to ride it through the tunnel. It turns on to Kellogg Boulevard at the base of the tunnel. And the base of the tunnel is still there, just deteriorated. The Selby Lake Line went through downtown St. Paul on 4th Street. This stretch right here is the east end of the Green Line today. We're crossing the corner of Sibley, past the St. Paul Union Depot, which is out of the frame at right, and now passing around the turn loop at Broadway. And returning up the tunnel. and climbing through the West Portal back into the center of Selby Avenue. Nineteen twenties video is rare, but this came from a Ford Motor Company travelogue of downtown St. Paul during the Winter Carnival. During the last years of streetcar service in St. Paul, the Hamlin-Cherokee line was the only one that crossed the Wabasha Bridge to the west side of St. Paul. Here it is on Wabasha at 4th Street and crossing the river on the Wabasha Bridge. As with so many bridges, there was a 10 mile an hour speed limit for streetcars. The South St. Paul line used the Robert Street Bridge across the river. And here's another view of the Robert Street Bridge. A South St. Paul car approaches the end of the line at the Invergrove city limits. Now we're going to take a trip to Matamidi in North St. Paul. This car has just left East 7th Street into private right-of-way. It's turning into what is now the right-of-way of Hazel Street to go north to Hazel Park and beyond that to North St. Paul and Matamidi. This is the end of the line for local service at Hazel Park. Until 1951, when this footage was taken, suburban cars continued beyond to North St. Paul and Matamidi. Here you see the crane pulling up the track. And this is a Hazel Park car pulling out of the Y at Hyacinth Avenue.
and it heads for St. Paul down what is today the median of Furness Parkway. And we're back at East 7th Street with a car coming into 7th Street from Hazel. This is Henry Street in North St. Paul, and this was the meeting point for cars in the later years. The Matamidi line was single-tracked, and there was a passing siding here. Now we're on the car, headed from North St. Paul up to Matamidi. This was really a country trolley. And until 1932, the cars went all the way to White Bear Lake and to Stillwater. This is just south of Wildwood and Willerney. This area is now a bike trail. We're just south of Matamidi, and behind the camera was where the old Wildwood Amusement Park was until 1938. This is the end of the line in Matamidi, with a rail fan trip coming out of the Y and the regular service car backing in. Now we're going to visit several of the car houses. The first is East Side Station. This car is a pull-in on First Avenue Northeast. All the streetcars had to back into East Side Station. and he's holding the trolley rope to make sure that it doesn't dewire at one of the frogs. It's late in the game and you can see the for sale sign for the building is up. This building survived as Superior Plating Company for many years and was finally torn down after 2005. It was the last of the car houses in service. This is a rail fan trip pulling out of East Side Station. They like to use the gate cars that ran on the inner campus line. They were the last gate cars in operation on the system. A 1953 fan trip passes through the yard of Lake Street Station. Lake Street Station was located on Lake Street at 21st Avenue South. That's the water tower for the Minneapolis Moline plant in the distance. and the yard at Lake Street viewed from Lake Street. Snelling Station was one of two car houses in St. Paul. It was located next to the main shop, Snelling Shops, and it was really the operational heart of the system. It was located at Snelling and University. The camera is panning across the main storage yard. 
There's one of the sand cars that distributed sand and salt in winter weather. That's one of the shop shifters that moves streetcars around the yard. In the distance is the big Montgomery Ward retail store and distribution center. This is the other end of the yard, the east end. and looking at the maintenance tracks of the Snelling Station itself. Now we're going to take a look at a whole series of non-revenue work cars. These were designed for every kind of task. They had hinged sides, which if turned up, you could haul gravel, coal, ashes. Turned down, you could carry rails. That's why the cab is elevated, so you could go and fit rails on the deck underneath the sides of the cab. Some of these cars were stationed at every one of the six car houses. This converted streetcar carried parts from the central store's warehouse to each of the streetcar barns each day. This is one of the three shop shifters, very small cars made from one of the old original cable cars. They were the oldest pieces of equipment in the system, and they shifted cars around within the Snelling Shops complex. There were three crane cars. This one mostly offloaded coal from rail cars. This one was used as a wrecker. This one mostly worked the rail pile at Snelling. This is one of the overhead wire maintenance cars. This is one of the sand and salt cars. The streetcar system generated its own electricity. This is the main steam station, located by St. Anthony Falls on the east end of the Stone Arch Bridge. It's still there today, powering the University of Minnesota. There was also a hydro station above the falls and a hydro station below the falls. Here's the view of the other end of the station. You can see the little electric locomotive that brought coal cars in. The streetcar system was powered at 600 volts of DC current. This is one of several substations that boosted the power all over the system. Most of the overhead wire maintenance was done with these overhead wire trucks that could get on and off the tracks quickly. When the streetcars were discontinued, the 141 streamlined PCC cars still had value and were sold to other cities. This one is going to Mexico City. Starting in World War II, Twin City Lines began relying more heavily on buses and bought over 200 of these Mack buses. The last streetcars were replaced by buses on June 19, 1954. This series of scenes shows a wire car making a trip a week later over the Como Harriet line. They're pulling up rails. And basically scrapping the line as they go. They're also taking down the overhead wire. This is by Lake Harriet. Today, this is where the streetcars of the Minnesota Streetcar Museum run. 
at 43rd and Upton in Linden Hills. This was one of the very last movements on the streetcar system. This is the loop at 44th and France Avenue. The streetcars were replaced by 500 General Motors buses.